hello and welcome back to my channel and another what I've watched. So what we watched in the last week, which I think is the second week of April we're on now. So let's get straight into it. Um, you can see just down here the side my Letterboxd account. If you want to join Letterboxd, I will put a link in the description. It's very simply just somewhere where you can actually keep a log of everything that you've watched. You can rate it, you can review it. You can link up with friends accounts and see what they're watching, what they think of certain things. And if you type in a movie, like let me just pull one up here. So I'll just click on kill list so you can see what I mean. Right, why is it taking so long? So if I click on kill list, it will tell me. Now you can see watched by. These people are on my friends list. So you can see the scores with um, people that I know. I can see what they've thought of the movie which um, is obviously helpful if you know you have similar tastes to some friends. So it's well worth joining up. You can pay for like a pro version. I'm not entirely sure what that includes. I don't have it. I just keep it to keep a track of what I've watched really. Um, it's really useful for someone like me with a terrible memory um, that forgets if they've seen something that was released like three or four years ago. Let's check Letterboxd. Yes, I've seen it. So let's get back to what I've watched this week. So. I apologise, that is my son flushing the toilet. I'm sure every time I put a camera on, cacophony must start in the background. So, bad trip. Now, from the offset, let me say this is not the kind of genre that I generally go for. I don't tend to enjoy prank shows. I do love Borat, and I know he does do a bit of that in his movies. That I can bear. This, right, I'll tell you why I won't. Now the dog's outside. I watched this because Sean from Lost in the Real hated it so much, I really wanted to see what it was like. Um, Aaron from Screen Stars and Austin Burke, two channels I watch religiously, both enjoyed this. Sean from Lost in the Real hated this, so I had to watch it, even though I knew it wasn't my cup of tea. So take that into consideration as I tell you what I think. So you may have seen the one star out of five. Um, the one star's there because I did actually like the personality of the star of this, Eric Andre. I did like how he came across. I'm not aware of any of his previous stuff because, as I say, I don't watch this kind of thing, like Jackass, and I don't really enjoy it. I think when it first, Jackass first came out, the uniqueness of it was quite shocking and like, oh my god, I can't believe they're going to do that. But then it's just more of the same, more of the same, and it's just not, not for me. So this movie is... It's a mix of a scripted body comedy um, intermingled with lots of pranks pulled on members of the public which are all really cringy and if you like that sort of thing you're probably gonna love this. I generally cringe at all this sort of thing and I watch it and think there's no way in this life that person doesn't realise that this is a setup. They can't not know and I struggle with that but there's a specific scene in this in a zoo with a gorilla and if any of the people watching didn't know I just, my hope for humanity has gone. It's so ridiculous. It's it personally, as far as I'm concerned, in quite bad taste. I didn't find it funny. A lot of people did. I just was like, oh, you know, you know, when you get to that stage, just, I don't cover my eyes. I'm, I'm not looking. It's just wrong. Um, wasn't for me. I can appreciate some people love this kind of thing. If you do like prank shows and quite crude humour, um, then you probably will love this. It wasn't for me. I gave it one out of five. So I'm with you, Sean. Totally with you on that. Same evening, I watched Kill List. Now, this was an interesting one. <clears throat> this is a movie like... Um, you know the way Dusk Till Dawn is a movie of two genres? It does very quickly sort of switch, and you're quite surprised by the switch from, like, a, a gritty thriller to, like, a vampire horror. Well, this one... It is a gritty British thriller set in London. The accents are very strong here, so if you're from America, you may struggle a little bit initially with the accents because I did, and I'm from the UK people, so, well, I'm from Ireland. I'm from the north of Ireland, which, geographically speaking, is in the UK, for anyone that doesn't get what I'm saying there. So, you're probably struggling to understand me. I talk too fast. So, this movie follows um, a guy. He's married. He's not very happy. He's just come back from war. He has a pal from Northern Ireland. We like to see the representation. They're obviously up to something that's not quite good. You can tell by the title, Kill List. They have been given a list of people they must kill and they're going to be paid rather handsomely for it. Now, I don't want to say any more than that. There is a switch in genre and some weird stuff happens. And I personally feel we should have stuck with that original format of a really gritty British thriller. There are a few special effects in here for violent scenes and they're breathtaking. 
they're so realistic. I mean, I was open mouthed at some of the scenes. I just, it was like watching something happening for real. Um, I was shocked. So big thumbs up for the special effects. There isn't much gore in this, but what there is in certain scenes of violence is just shockingly realistic. Um, the change won't be for everyone. The switch up I thought wasn't entirely gone into enough. There wasn't enough explanation. There wasn't enough investigation of that side of things. Um, it ends, one of those movies that ends very abruptly and leaves you thinking, leaves you going to Google and typing in kill list ending explained to see if you've missed something and I hadn't. Um, it just was what it was and there was nothing really more to it. But I would still recommend it for that initial gritty British just really nasty thriller. Um, I just thought it was really effective, really well done, so I do recommend that one. Okay, next day we watched, this is a documentary on um, Netflix at the moment. I don't know what's happening with my connection, it's really slow, I do apologise. So this is a four-part documentary on Netflix, which is still deciding is it going to load? Yes, this is a robbery, the world's biggest art heist. So this is about a, no whereabouts is it? Boston Museum. So this has got massive paintings in by the likes of Rembrandt, who I adore as an artist, I love his stuff. So basically two guards are in here looking after this museum. One of them is a bit of a stoner, he plays in a band, he's not taking his job as a security guard all that seriously. He buzzes in a couple of people dressed as policemen, who it turns out aren't policemen. He doesn't follow proper procedure and this museum is just cleared out of so many precious expensive paintings. This follows the story of what happened, of what happened that evening, of the police investigation, of people that they think are responsible. Um, so obviously true story, real footage, really really interesting. Um, some people might find it as boring as you like but I, I really enjoyed it because you know me with true stories, um, I would recommend. So this is a robbery, the world's biggest art heist. Um, on the 8th, the next evening, I really, really like this one. I had never heard of this and I saw it pop up on so many people's like reviews and people said, oh yeah, I really enjoyed this. I see. Austin Burke gave it a three and a half. There's a lot of three and a half, so there's a four. So yeah, I agreed. I give it a three and a half. This follows um, a gentleman. He's a retired special forces officer. This is another one of those stuck in the time loop, like living the same day over and over again, but this one is great. This one made me physically make exclamations out loud. Now, I'm quite a quiet cinema watcher. Uh, I'm not a shrieker. There's nothing that irritates me as much as when you go to the cinema to watch a horror and you've got a row of teenage girls shrieking behind you at nothing. Really takes... I hate it. I can't even tell you. So anyway, this has got moments that will make you make utterances at, at the just what you're watching. It's like, oh, bloody hell. You know what I mean? It's it's just really, it's fast paced. Um, we do see the same footage of places over and over, but it's always entertaining. The action is really like fast, moves fast. The scenes, he dies every day basically, and then he goes back to the beginning. So kind of like the concept with Death Day, but, but good. I didn't like Death Day, I don't know why. This I loved. So basically he lives the same day over. He has to discover what it is that he needs to do to get further into the day. There's a certain time is the latest he's ever got to. He knows what's going to happen when. He preempts everything. He's like an expert driver, fighter, everything. It's, it's a bit OTT but personally I love the hell out of it. It was a lot of fun. Um, and in the midst of trying to get further into the day, find out a little bit more about what's happening, he has to solve the issue of how he got there and how this is happening. I would thoroughly recommend this. I really enjoyed it. It's just a bit of daft, silly fun, but the action sequences alone make it well worth watching. So boss level. On the 10th, I rewatched one of my favourite movies of all time. You can see it's a four and a half there. It's Saw. I know not everyone's a big fan. I know some people really like the first movie and hate the rest. I lap up this because I, I've said this before. I just love the traps, the ingenuity of them, the, the morality behind everything. The first movie was okay, a lot cleverer than the rest, but the traps and everything make it worth me. I will watch them till the cows come home. Give me 30 saws, I will watch every damn one of them. So I watched it again and that prompted my um, 10 movie moments. When I say movie moments, there's loads of moments I like, I love in movies, like the end of An Incredible Journey where chance comes shadow, where shadow comes over the hill and they think he hasn't made it because he's too old and I cry every time. 
that's an incredible movie moment but what I mean by that is movie moments that left you open jawed because you didn't see them coming or that make you have a reaction like oh my god and the end of Saw does that to me so there's a spoiler that's number one on my top 10 movie moments but watching this prompted me to want to do that video I thought I wonder what other people get physical reactions to certain scenes in movies and what are those scenes so I invite you to do the tag people even if I haven't tagged you please do it I'd love to see what everyone's got to say I didn't tag everyone that I wanted to see do it because I wanted to leave other people for others to tag if that makes sense so anyway I deviate so amazing fantastic so on that day I watched three movies so two distant strangers ah this is only half an hour long that's why I watched three so this I can really see what they're doing here um this is a movie um very heavily influenced I would say by um the George Floyd situation this is about a young black man that lives the same day this is quite common at the minute over and over again but it doesn't matter what this young man does every single day the policeman who's the distant stranger kills him doesn't matter what changes he makes and obviously unjustly in every situation and obviously the message is it doesn't matter what you do if they're going to shoot you they're going to shoot you and it's a horrible indictment of what goes on in the world and it does and at the end there is a list of all the black people that have been shot and killed by the police and it maybe you know the list is endless and then every maybe fifth or tenth person it puts beside their name what they were doing when they were killed and it's like going to the grocery store you know it's like just really banal things normal everyday things these people were doing so this is like a half hour short exploring that message so um yeah it, well, it was good i thought it could have been a little bit more effective i thought then again a bit of humor is introduced in this and you feel well it's not a humorous situation and it isn't but it, it fools you in the last clip it fools you so maybe that's purposeful so i would recommend that everyone watch that um i gave it a two because i just feel is an extremely important message that more could have been done with but I do feel the message itself is important enough to watch it's on Netflix at the moment on the same evening I watched rent a pal now this is one I saw on spooky astronauts channel I apologize my battery ran out again honest to god you can't get a battery these days so as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted if you are not a subscribed to spooky astronauts channel definitely get over there she um some of the horror recommendations she comes out with real hidden gems foreign movies creepy movies um i get so many recommendations from her channel this was one this is a weird one this has got will wheaton in it as you've never seen will wheaton before so this is about a set in 1990 a lonely bachelor named david basically david is signed up to the whole video dating thing and unfortunately david is a quite awkward individual his video that he's recorded of himself is not good he's not getting very many replies from women he's interested in all these women no one's interested in him and one day in a real state I suppose and feeling like he's getting nowhere in a bargain bin he spots a tape um, called rent a pal with a picture of Will Wheaton in the front he um, buys this and takes it home and basically it is a video of a guy sat in a chair chatting like they're chatting to you like they're really there part of a conversation and he watches it and feels a bit odd about it at the beginning but as time goes on he starts to obsess over this video and he knows what's going to be said and when it's like well tell me a bit about yourself and then he sits back and says nothing he comes up to the camera oh your house i love what you've done and all this sort of thing so so the charismatic andy will wait in offers him much needed company compassion and friendship but andy's friendship comes at a cost and david desperately struggles to afford the price of admission i love the way they've written that that sounds really cool um, this really does interfere with his life and in the end a girl is called Lisa incidentally there's too many of us in the world um, she is interested in him she's a lovely girl and they've so much in common but Andy has other ideas so Andy's just a tape this guy is just his brain has just something's happened along the way um, it's really different it's really creepy in places I really enjoyed it I would recommend it it is very slow for the first three quarters of the movie but um, it just, it focuses on the real, like the psychological, emotional side of things. And I find that really disturbing. So yeah, rent a pal, I would recommend. I give that three out of five. On the next evening, now this is the last one, but there's my dog off again. 
Um, you can see there the power on the 12th, that was last night, which was Monday, so I will cover that next week. So lastly, sun. I'm running out of stuff to watch that I know is any good, because, you know, everything that I've got left to watch, I know other people have watched and says, mm -hmm. and they were right, sun. I watched it last night. This is about a young lad that develops a mysterious illness. Um, that illness makes him do things. I don't want to say what it is because it's given it away. It makes him do things that no person should ever be doing and the mother is trying to save him from death um, and she is supporting what he's doing to live. I can't go any further than that. Um, I have watched other people's reviews. Um, the main one that sticks in my mind is Jen's reviews from The Grave reviewed this and her son Christian reviews movies with her and he was saying but no mother's gonna, you know, you wouldn't do that. And she was saying, look, you'd be surprised at what a mother would do for her child. They would do anything. And I'm here to say, I completely agree. Um, the mother in this seems, you think, no, no, that's not gonna happen. But the extent that a woman will go to for, and I suppose in a lot of cases a father also, but I can't speak from that point of view, but a mother for her child will go to the ends of the earth and do things that perhaps she should not be doing. But a mother's love is, is fierce, you, you know, it's like lioness level. And I completely understood where this woman was coming from in this movie. I know it's been criticised for being, a woman wouldn't do that. I'd probably flip and do this. But um, when a young boy contracts a mysterious illness, his mother must decide how far she will go to protect him from terrifying forces in her past. I'll just switch that off. Um, so there's talk about like a cult that she has escaped, all this other stuff. They add a bit in at the end that's a bit daft as far as I'm concerned, but it's a mediocre, run-of-the-mill horror movie. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen by far. It's If you have nothing else to watch, it fills an evening, but um, I wouldn't overly recommend you rush out to see it. So this week, what else? I've been watching The Flight Attendant on Now TV. I th is that on Sky One? Not sure. I watch it on Now TV, which has got her from Big Bang. Kaylee, is it Kuko? I can't flip and pronounce it. It's got her and she's really, really good in this. I read that um, she'd been waiting quite a long time for the right script. And as soon as she saw this, she was like, right, yep, definitely. I want to play this girl in this script. Um, I haven't got to the end yet, I'm very close. It is very good, but I feel the first episode sets you off on the wrong foot and makes you think it's going to be a bit more of a thriller, fast-paced crime show. It isn't. At the minute, it's quite sort of drama, um, mystery. It is quite slow. Uh, would I have watched it if I knew the complete content had I not been invested in the first episode? Possibly not. Um, but I'm going to finish it because I've started it. I also have started Them which has now premiered on Prime. I've watched three episodes, I believe. Um, I'm loving the acting, I'm loving the feel and the mood of it. Um, but as other people have said, this was crying out for Jordan Peele to direct it. It just needed that little bit of something extra. Again, I haven't finished it, but the one thing I'm feeling while I'm watching it is complete and utter rage and anger. Um, this follows a black family. Is it? I think it's the 50s. It's either the 50s or the 60s and they move into an area that's entirely white, you know, like the suburban, you know, every house is the same, everybody's out with their lawnmowers, you know, that sort of crack, and the Stepford Wives type thing. And the way they're being treated is just repugnant, and it gets my back up to, so I can't even tell you, I just watch it, and I'm lying there watching it with such complete and utter hatred, and you shouldn't feel that, but when you look at how they were treated and what people went through, and you know that people went through this, and that people like me, white people, put people through this, it, it's just infuriating. It's completely and utterly infuriating. Anyway, I'm going off on one. So I will go back to it when my temper allows me to. But that's just one subject matter that I just... Don't get me started on that or the Holocaust because I'll be here all day. So yes, that's what I've watched in the last week. Um, let me know, please let me know below if there's anything you would recommend that I check out. There are a few that I want to see at the moment, but um, they haven't been released as yet. I haven't got my hands on them, so um, let me know any suggestions. And your thoughts on anything I've watched also would be appreciated. Um, hit the like button. I never say this. Give a sub if you haven't and hit the like button. It does help the channel out. I have hid, you may notice, in some of my videos, I have hidden the likes and dislikes because I've got a lovely little person that likes to go through all my videos all at once and hit the dislike button on them all. Bless their little cotton socks. They're helping my stats, so bless them. So thank you for watching. Overnight from Lisa Lives.